Hey everyone, Couch Investor, you're back with another Lemonade video for today. So in today's video, we're going to discuss the warning signs, the high risk, high reward scenario for Lemonade. As you all know, we've seen lots of bear reports coming out lately regarding Lemonade. We've had the friendly bear report. We've had the Citron research, Citron Lemonade, you see. We've had seeking alpha writers with a $10 price target. And then these lame arguments that Lemonade is just an insurance company, just like Tesla is just an automaker. Apple only makes iPhones, Square is just a card swiping company, etc. I'm also going to discuss later the ARK Invest argument. I know a lot of us love ARK. I also respect their decisions, but in this case, I disagree with them. But I'm also going to make a separate video regarding ARK Invest as a whole, so stay tuned for that. But before I continue in this video, I think that by now we will have reached 10,000 subscribers. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you everyone that has been subscribing to this channel. 2021 is just starting. It's going to be an insane year. I'm going to try and bring the best guests to this channel. So stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. And if you like these videos, leave it an early thumbs up as it really helps me grow the channel and get my videos out there. So without further ado, charts first. All right, so looking at the charts, we can see that a top was reached actually around $185. Since then, we've had this Citron Research bear report. I don't think that's why this stock has gone down. I just think that the stock has gone up way too fast. They've had great timing with their report. They might claim that it's because of their report that the stock has gone down. But if you look at their track record, it's crap. So I just think that the stock has just gone up way too quickly without any actually news that something fundamentally changed inside the company. Earnings report is still a long way ahead of us. So I would see maybe the stock go even lower. Who knows? After three red days, three red candles, usually you see a fourth one. If not, then we can see a big rebound on Tuesday because when the video is posted, Martin Luther King Day, so the markets are closed. Overall, if it goes lower at 120, even $100, you will see a lot, a lot of buying action. I will be buying at those prices as well. Right now, I bought back again a little bit at 145 and I will be waiting for further market reactions. Right now, let's be a bit critical. Let's go on the critical side of the Lemonade investment and think things through. So first up, Lemonade is still a very, very young company. Usually a company like Lemonade does not go public as early as it did. Right now, they just turned, I think, five years. Right now, I think they just turned five years old. So still pretty, pretty young. We can actually look at some graphs that show us that the median age of tech companies at IPO is actually growing since 2011. We went from 10-year-old companies to 13-year-old in 2017. Why is that? Well, maybe there's more money in the private market. Why do they need to go public if there is a lot of money in the private sector? There's also this interesting statistic saying that over the past two decades, nearly half of the publicly traded companies in the US have vanished. We can again see this graph right here. In 1999, the age of a company going into the public market was around four years and it was valued at half a billion dollars. In 2018, a company that goes public was three times older and was worth four times more. So you might ask yourself, why did Lemonade go public as early as it did? It's actually a question I want to ask the CEO. So if you want the CEO to come on this channel, go on Twitter, go to my last tweet and tag him and tell him to come on the channel because it's actually a very interesting question. I can actually think of a couple of reasons, one of them being getting free exposure when you are called Lemonade and you're in the insurance industry, something that has been here for years. You come here with a name like Lemonade, with a super pink logo, you use AI, machine learning. Obviously, you will get free exposure. I think this is one of the main reasons why I could think that they went public as early as they did. And second of all, maybe for the liquidity, who knows? But again, if you want to hear the correct answer, we'll try and get Daniel Schreiber on the channel. Now, being a super young company means that they need to show us aggressive growth in the next couple of years because we all know that the market likes to give high valuations to disruptive companies, especially a company like Lemonade. Most of you know that a lot of customers that choose Lemonade are first-time insurance buyers. What does that actually tell us? One, it tells us that Lemonade has succeeded in doing something that those 
super old insurance company have not been succeeding for years now, which is attracting people that never wanted to buy insurance before. And two, what does that show us? Well, it shows us that Lemonade can compete even without stealing customers from other companies. I'm pretty sure there are some customers that are leaving Allstate, State Farm, Geico to join Lemonade. But since the market gives them a high valuation, we would like them to grow even further, not just take those people that never had insurance before, but acquire customers that were clients from other companies. Now we all know that Lemonade is growing. The numbers don't lie. We can see here they have more customers than they did a year ago, more premiums per customer, which means more enforced premium. We can see also that the gross earned premium is growing. Revenue should be growing as well. We can see here the decline is just because of the new reinsurance policy. Loss ratio steadily goes down. Again, this difference here between net loss ratio and gross loss ratio is because of the new reinsurance policy. Hopefully in the next quarter, we can see a clearer number. Gross profit again goes up 83%. Gross profit margins goes up as well. And adjusted gross profit goes up even higher. What does that tell us? It tells us that Lemonade is growing at a rapid pace. Like we've seen in previous videos, Lemonade has reached a million customers far quicker than all the other companies. It has taken them 4.5 years to reach a million customers. Usually it takes those other insurance company 20 years, almost 30 years to reach that milestone. So there you have it. Lemonade is growing at a rapid pace, but the market is giving them that high valuation, which means that they need to continue to deliver those numbers. Now let's talk about the ARC argument and why ARC did not buy into Lemonade. So they gave us a couple of excuses, one being they have no moat, two, the use of reinsurance, and three, it's just an app that looks nice. So let's start with the easy one, which, the, which is the app that just looks nice. I think that's a BS excuse, actually. It's not just an app that looks nice. They're using AI and machine learning, which is collecting hundreds, if not thousands of data points that probably other insurance companies have not been collecting for years. This is going to improve their AI moving forward and improve their loss ratio as well, which moves into the second point, which is the reinsurance part. I've discussed this in the past as well. Daniel Schreiber said it himself. They don't really need reinsurance. It just so that they managed to get great deals with the reinsurance partners. So why not take that? Why put the risk on this company if they can put the risk on somebody else and be capital light? And the last point, which is the moat excuse. Again, I think this is a BS excuse. Did Tesla have a moat when they started? No. Did Square have a moat when they started? No. Did Apple have a moat when they started? No. They so just managed to go into a market, disrupt it, and have a huge following behind them. What is happening now with Tesla, Square, and Apple? Well, obviously, Apple is the most valuable company in the world. Square, super successful. Cash App, super successful. Huge fans. Tesla, we all know what happened with Tesla. Great company, huge following. Same thing will happen with Lemonade. You can see it already right now. Super high feedback rating, huge following on Twitter. Everybody's tweeting, oh, it was so easy to get Lemonade insurance. Do you see those fanboys with Geico, Allstate, State Farm? I don't think you do. All right, so to conclude, do I think that ARC will eventually buy Lemonade? I have no clue, but I expect Lemonade to be growing aggressively in the next couple of years. I expect Lemonade to be a $100 billion company in the next 10 years. Yes, that means that they need to grow and expand pretty quickly. But like I've said in previous videos, Lemonade is not like insurance companies in the United States that just stays in the United States. Lemonade is going global. Very, very important aspect that a lot of people are not talking about that is that Lemonade is not just competing with Allstate, Geico in the United States. Lemonade wants more than the United States wants to go into Europe and maybe other markets as well. But to reach that high valuation, they will obviously need to do something that those legacy companies are doing, which is generating tens of billions of dollars in revenue each and every year. Something that they're not even close to be doing right now. That's why we have a high valuation. And that's why you see a lot of haters and bear reports at the moment. With that said, you will continue seeing haters. You will continue seeing bear reports about Lemonade, but we all know patience is key. Obviously, if something will change fundamentally with the company, I will let you know. If they suddenly stop growing at a rapid pace, maybe there will be some warning signs, but as of now, they are growing rapidly. As for the stock price, you will see some days the stock go up 10%, the other day go down 15%. 
that is something that is normal, especially with a company like Lemonade, a disruptive company. We've seen that with Tesla, we've seen that with Square and probably other tech companies as well. And that will be it for this video. Let me know down in comments below what your critical thoughts on Lemonades are. Just don't be a hyper bull, uber bull and just think on the positive. I want to know also the negative sides of your investment thesis on Lemonade. Leave it down in the comments below. And if you like these videos, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, take care, stay safe, and see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.